Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stu and the crew. I'm Rebecca and today we have a new Dollar Tree DIY for y'all for the holiday season. So we are going to be making some different signs and displays with some Dollar Tree materials. So let's go over the supplies first. We'll use some holiday gift bags from Dollar Tree. I also have some scrapbook paper. You may or may not need that depending on the size you make, some craft paper. We're also going to be using some scissors and hot glue, some double-sided tape, also some different size canvas and some different frames. I'm using these old canvas frames. I'm going to use one of these small um, signs from Dollar Tree as well as one of these round wood signs from Dollar Tree and their wood bead uh, garland. Also one of these brass wreath rings. It comes in a three pack. And then I'll use a few different pieces of the mini um pine picks, some um, floral. I chose to use a few different poinsettias and the berries that are snow covered and the plain. Uh, they have lots of different options you can use from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using a few of these little miniature trees, some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. We're also going to need some paint. I'm going to use the white, black, and some antiquing wax. We're also going to need some paint brushes. And then I'm going to use this birch ribbon, again, optional, as well as this vinyl. This is just to decorate the back. We'll use some ribbon to decorate the front and some twine. And then we'll need a little bit of floral wire. Also a stapler if you need it, you may or may not. And the thumbtacks as well as a hammer and then bells of your choice. So let's get crafty. So the first project we're going to make is actually going to be two different ones because we can get two signs out of one bag. Um, we're just going to first open up the bag. We're going to split it down the side. And I always try to be careful. I try to split the bag exactly in half because I never know exactly how much of the material I'm going to need for um, each frame because I choose to do them in a bunch of different sizes. So I always try to cut them down so I have the largest amount of paper just in case I need to like wrap it around or make it stretch in a larger frame. Now some of the frames that I'm using today were old canvas that we had painted just around the house for fun and I had them for a really long time so I removed the canvas off of them and just kept the frames because they were really nice and I knew I could use them in another craft project but you could also use the Dollar Tree stretched canvas that they have um there they have lots of different sizes you can get the bigger sizes in the dollar tree plus section for about three dollars so um, there's lots of options there to use the bigger frames or you could just use picture frames if you can find a nice large one so this is 11 by 14 size so it's a little bit larger i'm just going to take that frame once i remove the canvas and i'm going to lay it and try to center the picture right in the middle Once I have it centered, I'm going to take a pencil or a marker and I'm going to trace around the outside of the frame. So I want to make sure this is cut large enough that it's going to stretch all the way across to be adhered to the back. And for the purposes of the video, I'm using this gold marker just so you guys could see hopefully the lines a little bit easier. So then we'll go ahead and cut the bag down to size. And it always makes sense to just go larger if you need to, because you can always take more off later, but you can't really put it back on as easy as you can take the excess off. Okay, so here is our bag. I check for sizing. I always check a few times to make sure that I have it down to the right size. And now I'm going to use a pencil to trace inside the frame. This is going to help me know where to place the frame once I add like the glue and things like that. So now I'll set the bag aside. I wanted to do that before I painted it. And then I'm going to take just some antiquing wax on a damp 
a like paper towel because I want to really just spread it out. I didn't want it real thick. I just like a nice thin layer. So I always use a little bit of moisture on the towel when I'm using the antiquing wax and that helps to spread the wax out a little bit and not get it so dark. Then I'm going to take that same rag and just dip it in some white paint. And this is just adding some um, like weathering, aging kind of to the frame. I didn't want it to be this like bright popping brown. I wanted it to have a little bit of like an antique farmhouse look. So we're just really taking a very small amount of white paint and just keep rubbing it in until we get this kind of like faded look all over the frame. And I didn't paint the back of any of these. It's optional if you want to. Then I took a hammer. This part's optional. And I just kind of beat up the frame a little bit. I want it to look aged. So I'm putting some marks in the wood. And then I'm going to go in with the dark black paint. And I'm going to just hit those spots that I hit with the hammer. And try to get the paint down in those little grooves. And then I take that damp towel and rub it off. And that really helps to age the frame. You don't need to do a whole bunch. I just did a little bit. And I just really like the way that it looks. So again, this part's optional. You can choose to do this or not. I have kind of a farmhouse Christmas uh, vibe going on in my house right now. So I thought that these would look really nice with that aged kind of farmhouse look. Okay, so we'll let those dry. Here's a close-up so you guys can see just a little bit how that black gets down into those little grooves. So now I line up my frame and I'm just gonna lift the one side up and add hot glue to the right side and then push the frame down. And this is perfect for getting your paper to be centered. And then you can continue to add hot glue and I'm going to show you guys a few different ways to add the paper to these frames. So for this one, I chose to do hot glue. And then I add um, some craft paper to the back and some thumbtacks just to make sure it, you know, stayed down. Because this one wanted to wrinkle just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a few different ways. But I take some thumbtacks and you sometimes you can just push them down into the frame. Sometimes you do need the hammer. But you want to grab the paper and kind of stretch it. Um, to, so it's nice and tight, but I had already glued it down uh, when I realized it had a small wrinkle in it, but I was trying to just to get it down in place. So once I have all the thumbtacks in, then what I'm going to do is just cut some of that brown craft paper that Dollar Tree carries in the rolls. Um, and I'm just going to trace around the frame, make sure it's large enough. I like to have a nice finished back on all of my projects that I make, even if I'm just keeping them for around the house. I just like to have a finished look. I don't like to leave the backs undone. So we're just going to cut out this craft paper and then we'll attach this to the back of the picture. And then we'll add a hanger. So I just used staples for this. I just opened up my stapler and I just stapled it right to the back. So now we're going to take some of those pine uh, picks that the Dollar Tree sells. These have a little bit of fake snow on them and the point set is I pulled the leaves off and then I just popped the end of that wire on those um, pine needles right through the center of the flower. And I do that to two of them and then I put them together and I take a piece of floral wire and I just wrap it right around the middle. Of course, you want to move the leaves out of the way so you don't pin them down. But you just want to wrap around the center a few times to hold it together. And you want to pull it kind of tight. You could also use a cable tie or like a zip strip here. That would work really well um, to hold it together. You wouldn't see it because the flowers would cover it. Okay, so I've got that together. That's going to go on the bottom of the sign. So I'm just going to add some hot glue. And then I'll attach this right to the center and I hold it in place for a few seconds just to make sure it stays down. The frame has a bit of a curve to it. So you always wanna make sure that you push down on the floral to make sure that it's really sticking and not just grabbing a little bit of the glue. So then it still looked a little bit sparse in the center. So I wanted to add one more flower. And so I just add some hot glue and attach that right to the center to give me a nice big poinsettia in the middle. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add a hanger. So 
we're going to use these little beads. I cut them off of the string and I restrung them on a smaller piece. I take some thumbtacks and I hammer them in a little bit in the back, not all the way down. And then I'm going to take those beads that I already pre-measured and strung up for the hanger. And all I'm going to do is take some of that extra um, twine and wrap it around the thumbtack and then hammer it down and then cut the excess off. And this is the easiest way to attach the hanger to the back. And you don't have to worry about glue coming loose or anything like that. And that's our first gift bag sign done. I just love these so much. They look so high end. So now we're going to do the second one. I'm using this Dollar Tree sign. They have been selling these since about August. Um, every once in a while, they'll get a whole new shipment in. I've seen them almost every week since August. Um, so they're pretty popular I know because they keep getting them back in usually if they're not so popular they'll stop ordering them so I was excited to see that they've kept these around those are really fun to craft with so we're going to just lay this on top of the bag and we're going to of course center it and then trace around it again with our marker now I was going to do the whole center of this sign just with the bag and then later on I changed my mind I just didn't like the way it was fitting and you couldn't really see the buffalo plaid that much so I changed direction here and I chose to use this birch ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut a few pieces so I can lay it underneath of the gift bag and we're going to put that down with some Mod Podge. So we're just going to take a nice layer of Mod Podge, cover the whole inside of this, and we'll work the whole middle um, in one section here. So we're, um, you know, sometimes I'll put the Mod Podge on and I'll work in sections and then I'll add more and do the next piece. But it's not really a large sign, so I didn't think it would be drying anytime soon. Um, in Texas, usually it dries pretty fast, but it's winter here, of course, so um, not as hot. And we're just going to layer down that birch ribbon. And it was plenty um, tacky, the glue still. So I really like that. I was able to just work this in one big section. I did add a little bit more glue where it was going to overlap just to make sure that I didn't have any pieces lifting up. And I didn't want to trim the ribbon down. Okay, so we've got the background down. Now I just trimmed this sign or this bag all the way around where the silver was at and cut all the buffalo plaid off. So then we'll center this and I'm going to first center it and then I mark it with a pencil to make sure I line it up properly when I add the glue. And I decided to go ahead and add Mod Podge to the back of the bag and attach it that way. And see how easy I was able to center it because I marked it ahead of time. So now while that's drying, we're going to take the smallest of those three brass rings and they're kind of like a yellowish gold color, maybe like a tan, not really a pretty color, but I'm going to go ahead and just add some black chalk paint from Dollar Tree to the front and then kind of like the border, you know, like the inside edge and the outside edge. Don't worry about the back, you won't see it, but you do want to make sure you get that inside and outside edge there. While that was drying, I decided that I wanted to paint the um, frame black also. So I painted the whole frame um, black and then I take another brush, which is a tiny little bit of white paint, and I just dry brush some white paint on it to help give it an aged look and just kind of blend the black. And I didn't want it to be a real harsh black and the light uh, white paint really helped to lighten it up a little bit. And I always add just a little bit of paint to the brush. I always figure I can go back in and add more if I want to, but I don't want to add like a ton right from the get go. So as you can see, I just keep going back over a few spots where I think the paint's a little light and I would like it to be a little bit um, brighter. So I always go back over it. So we'll let that dry. And now that the ring is dry, we can decorate it. So similar to the last sign, we're going to take our two picks and we're going to wire those together. And I left a long piece of wire still attached to it. That's intentional. So now we're going to take a few of these little berries. They have a wire already on them, so we'll just wrap those around the center a few times and no glue is necessary. And we'll add a few more berries these are the ones without the snow on them I just love these I grab a few bags of these each year when they put them out and then I have them so I can craft with them all season
Okay, so then I'm adding a few of these little pine cones. Now these come in, they have like a garland um, with pine cones, silver, gold berries, and a little bit of greenery. So I pulled all of that off of the garland that Dollar Tree has, and I just glue some of those onto uh, this little greenery piece here. And it's nice that all these little berries have wire already attached, so you can just wrap it around and stick it on really easy, and you don't need any glue. I love when I don't have to try to hide the hot glue. So again, I still had that long piece of wire from when I first put the two green pieces together, and that is how I'm using uh, or how I'm attaching it to the wire ring. I just laid it right on top and then I took that long piece of wire that was already attached to the greenery and just wrap it around a few times. And then if the greenery pieces are sticking out, you can take the end of that wire and just wrap it around the um, little ring as well. Then I added a little bit of hot glue to the back just to make sure it stayed down. So then I took some ribbon and I just looped it around the ring and we're going to glue this to the top right in the middle of the sign. So I got my first piece of ribbon down. I'll put another little dot of hot glue and then just pull it up so it looks like it's hanging from the top. And then I add a little bit of glue to the bottom to help hold it in place. And then I take the um, ribbon at the top, I tie it in a knot, and then I will cut the little dovetail in the ribbon on the ends. And then I wanted these to stay down in this position, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue to make sure they stay where I would like them to be. Now we're going to make a simple little bow. So we're just going to cut a few pieces of ribbon and create these loops. As you can see, I just put a little dot of hot glue and make these loops. Then you put them together and wrap some wire around the center. Very easy. And then we'll take one more piece of ribbon and we'll glue that around the center to hide the wire. Then just add this to the top with some hot glue. And now we're going to add the hanger. So I removed the hanger that was originally on the sign. We're going to reuse that. So we cut the end of this garland. We'll get the um, little wood beads and we just slide it over that little plastic piece on the end. And we're going to leave a little bit of space because I want to add bells to this. So we're going to take the hanger and fish it through the back to the front. And then we will take a silver bell and we're going to fish that through the end, pull it tight, and then pull it to the back. So the bell stays in the front and then the beads will be the top portion for the hanger. And we'll keep adding the beads until we have it almost completely filled. But just remember to leave room for that bell on the other side. Once we have our beads here, we'll just fish this through the back to the front. And then we'll put our last bell on. Just a little decorative touch to the front. And this one is finished as well. So that's our first gift bag. We were able to make two signs out of that gift bag. Now for our second set of pictures, we are going to use again another one of those large frames that I removed the canvas from. They're 11 by 14 inches. I'm going to paint them with, I'm using white paint, but I didn't clean the brush that I had used for the last one where they had the black paint on it. So it 
turned into kind of like a light gray, which I liked. So I just kind of left it that way. I wasn't really concerned if it had a light gray appearance to it. And then again, I hit it with the hammer to get that aged look, add some of the black paint, and then just lightly buff it off with a paper towel. And you can go over the marks a few times if you don't feel like it's picking up the paint all that well. I just want a little bit of it in there to age it. So I found these Christmas bags at Dollar Tree and I just fell in love with this one. I had to make something out of it. So again, we ripped the bottom of the bag open so we can lay the bag flat and then we'll cut right up the center of the gift bag on the side there. The creases make it really easy to cut it nice and straight. So again, we'll just lay our frame right over the picture and figure out where we want it to be and how we want it to look. Do I want more red? And of course, we're going to trace around the inside and the outside of the frame so we know where to cut and how large or small we need this paper to be. Now I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to take that double-sided tape from Dollar Tree and I'm going to add a few pieces of that to the back of the gift bag. And this will help us to add that craft paper on the back to have a nice backing and the gift bag to the frame all in one piece instead of in two steps like we did the last one. So just some different ways to um, put these together. So we'll peel off all of that little backing to that double-sided tape. I love this double-sided tape from Dollar Tree. I use it all of the time. So then I just cut the craft paper larger than the bag so I can stick it down and then I'll just trim around it. So once we have that all trimmed, we can add this to the frame. So I make sure it's centered a few times. I'm really cautious about making sure that it's going to be in the middle. If it was off centered, it would drive me crazy and I don't want to try to get these thumbtacks out. So that's why I check so many times. So I definitely just add one to start and then I'll pull the bag taut, add the second one to the bottom and then I'll flip it over and still make sure that it's centered the way I need it to be. And then we'll add the thumbtacks to either side. Again, just pull the bag tight before you add the thumbtack. So you don't have any wrinkles behind it and add as many as you want to the back to make sure that that paper stays down. Now we're going to take some twine and we're just going to cut um, a piece so we can have two um, little tassels here. I'm going to make them at different lengths. I just tie a knot in the top so they stay at those two different lengths. And I have these rusty bells from, um, I think I got them at Hobby Lobby one year for like 90% off. And I've been using them for a few years in a row now to craft with. I still have a ton left. But um, I just fished that through the bottom to add these kind of, you know, old rusty bells to the side. I don't have it glued on yet because I wanted to make a bow first. I wasn't sure how I was going to decorate this, but I really like this ribbon I picked up from Dollar Tree this year with the little um, white lines on the edges. I thought that was cute. And we're just making little loops and then we'll take some floral wire or some twine, whichever you prefer. And we're going to just tie that right around the middle to make a bow. But you can do the bow the same way we did the last one where you just make the loops where you glue them together and then gather them together in a bunch and tie them around the center. Either way will work. I also made a little twine bow. I didn't realize my battery died here in just a few seconds. So I took that twine sitting up in the corner and I made a little bow with that also. But I just fished that end of the tie through the end of the um, bell loop that I made. And that's how I'm attaching the bow to the top. This way I can glue it all together in one piece. I don't have to add tons of glue. And then I added a little bit of white floral. And then again, just the ribbon pieces that hang down. We just attached that with hot glue. And I just made a very simple um, string hanger on the back for this one. Now we're going to use that same bag and one of these large round signs. We're going to remove the hanger because we're going to add a different one later. 
and we're going to center this on top of the bag. Obviously, the circle is larger than the picture, so this is where that scrapbook paper comes in. If you have that birch ribbon, that will work as well to add a little bit of excess to the bottom and the top so that you can completely cover um, the circle. If you don't have any of that, you could actually just paint the top and the bottom where the paper doesn't reach. It would look nice as well and light gray, maybe even some dark black or red would look pretty. Um, so there's lots of different options. I'm just removing the hanger here off the top. I forgot that that little plastic piece was still on there. So as you can see, I kind of first start doing it like this, but then I didn't like that the lines at the bottom weren't really lining up with the red. So that's where I chose to use the scrapbook paper. And I'm just going to cut two strips off of this piece I picked up a long time ago at Hobby Lobby. And we are going to attach this to the top and the bottom of the bag. So I'm just going to put that double-sided tape at the top and the bottom and then add that scrapbook paper. And then I'll lay it back down on the, the wood sign and trace around it with a pencil so I can get the full circle. Okay, and then just trim that up with your scissors. It's okay if it doesn't match up perfectly because we can sand the edges of this once we're done. So we have it all figured out, all fitting on the top and the bottom there. Now these, we had those little holes from the gift bag um, tie. So I took a small piece of the bag scraps and I just cut two small squares that look like the uh, gray wood grain. And I put that behind the little holes where the um, holder was for the bag and we'll just tape these to the back so that we don't have those holes and it blends in really nice because it's all the same color. Okay, so we've got our picture all prepared. And now we will attach this with the Mod Podge. So just take um, your sponge brush and cover the whole thing with Mod Podge. Make sure it's enough that it's not drying, but um, not so much that's seeking into the wood and making it curl because it will since it's so thin or making the bag curl up. So once you've got that down, let it dry for a few minutes and go ahead and sand around the edges going away from the picture, you know, like towards the back so you don't rip the bag up off of the backing. So then we're just going to make that same simple bow by creating some little loops with some hot glue and some ribbon. So you can make your bow as big or as little as you want. I'm going to use, I think I use four or five pieces of the red and then I have this red and white that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I add, I think, two of those. And those will be for the top. So we're just going to gather these. I create an X pattern. Just kind of spread it out a little bit. And then I add that wire to the center to hold it all together. Go ahead and leave some excess wire on if you like. I'm going to leave that long piece on because I'm going to actually add a belt to the center. So I just take a craft knife and I poke the holes through the back of the sign so I can add the hanger. And I have these colorful beads from Dollar Tree and some twine. And we're just going to um, string up these beads. I'm using the red, the green, and then the natural color bead that I had from the garland. So measure out your twine and then go ahead and string up all your beads. And then I just add a bead to the front as the holder. Then we'll glue on our bow. A little bit of these pine needles. Those are those like garland wire ties from Dollar Tree. I just cut one in half and then fold it in half and then tuck that under the bow with some hot glue. Then take a little piece of wire, add your bell. And then I ended up putting a tiny little bit of hot glue under the bell to make sure it stayed in place. And here is our second sign with the same gift bag. Here are both of our signs. And now we'll do the last 
two, which is our third project here, we're going to use a Dollar Tree stretched canvas. And then we are going to use this gift bag here. Now I cut all of the buffalo plaid off of this one uh, just because I needed it to fit inside of an 8 by 10 frame. If you notice the Dollar Tree bags, one side always has like the glitter or the metallic look. And then the back usually just has the black um, print. It's not the decorative. So you get kind of two different looks with each side of the bag. So I make sure that this fits inside of the 8x10 frame from Dollar Tree. I just removed um, the canvas and then I replaced the canvas on the back. So just the canvas was on the back of it, but not like folded up around the edges, if that makes sense. I do that with um, some pictures all the time. So it was, you know, I didn't want to have to do the whole thing on camera. For you guys but you really just remove the canvas you cut the excess off of the border that was folded up around the back of the frame and then you just glue the canvas back down to the back and then you use it like a reverse canvas so we just use that double-sided tape to stick the picture down from the gift bag again we're making these little tiny loops with the ribbon from dollar tree and some wire I'm just making a very simple bow. Now, this ribbon has wire in it, which is nice. So you're able to make some bigger loops that stay in place, which I really like a lot. I like that they have the thinner wired ribbon. Sometimes when I see it, I like to get a few. So we'll just adjust our bow and we're going to glue this to the corner. And then I made one more bow just with some different ribbon and I'm going to layer that. And I decided just to make this picture one that will just sit like on a shelf. So I didn't add a hanger to the back of it. I like these little bit wider frames that are flat on the bottom because then you can just sit them somewhere. You don't have to hang them up. We'll add one of the little Dollar Tree mini trees to the center of the bow and a little bit of snowy uh, green pine needles to either side of the bow with some hot glue. Very simple, this one is done already. And now our last sign, I picked this up. It's like a number one sports sign type thing that sits. It's got like a little base on the bottom there so it will sit up. I picked these up at Michael's for like 25 cents. I love to grab uh, different things on clearance that I can use in crafting. I cut the bag down to size and then I just glue it to the front. I don't worry about the opening in the back or that trophy's at because you're not going to be able to see it. I know not everyone will have this wood sign from uh, the craft store but there's lots of different options you can use. I'm just showing different versions of the signs you guys can make with these bags then i take some dollar tree vinyl and i just cover the back because again i like the backs to be finished and then i paint the base with some black craft paint i believe i'm using the dollar tree um chalk paint it's nice and thick so you get one coat you don't have to worry about um a few, you know, putting a few coats of paint on and waiting for them to dry in between coats. Then some more of the Dollar Tree miniature trees. We're just going to add these to the base. And I think I put two on each side, a larger one and then a smaller tree. So to make this tree a little bit smaller, I just took the bottom off the little wood piece and it helped to shrink it down. So I have two different size trees there. And then I glue it to the back to make sure it stays on. And then the other side, I'll use one of the larger trees. And then one of the little mini trees. I just wanted a variety of different sizes. And that's it for that one. I just kept it pretty simple. So these are our last two signs we made with our gift bags. So here are all of the pictures that we've made today. Our happy holidays, the Christmas tree with the red backing, 
and then the farm fresh Christmas trees. I hope you guys enjoy learning how to make these crafts with me today using Dollar Tree gift bags. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone.